Living in Harmony For centuries, spiritual seekers have denied the basic self. By disagreeing the body, depriving ourselves of food, sleep and physical comfort, or suppressing our feelings, desires, and sexuality. The essence of neurosis is inner conflict, yet spiritual traditions, Eastern and Western, have often encouraged us to battle with ourselves in this way. The problem is that the basic self cannot be snapped out as if it was a malignant tumor. It is part of our wholeness. If we reject our bodies, emotions, or sexuality, we are not being spiritual, we are being neurotic. Other traditions have suppressed the conscious self, instructing its followers to stop thinking, to accept dogma without question, or to meditate until their rational minds wisely give up. How can we find our wholeness our holiness if we reject any part of ourselves. An alternative approach is to stop battling and instead learn to love ourselves. The time for growth through struggle, through separation, conflict has passed. It is time now for harmony, for healing, for integration. It is time to recognize that there is nothing wrong with us, nothing with us within us that is bad or unacceptable, and that our task is to integrate our three selves and to reclaim our wholeness. According to the Huna wisdom from Hawaiian shamans and other allied traditions, our three selves are each on their own path of evolution. Our basic self will gradually expand its awareness until in another lifetime, it becomes the conscious self. Our conscious self is slowly learning to be the higher self and our higher self is becoming the overall soul on its journey towards source from which it has come. This means that a primary task for us as conscious selves is to become a good parent to our basic self, to offer it unconditional love, just as our higher self does towards us, even if it seems to be sabotaging our interests. Our basic self is always doing as best it can. It simply needs our love, help and understanding. Imagine that there are three selves, and these three selves are three characters of a tree. At the front is the higher self, in the middle is the conscious self, and at the rear is the basic self. The higher self cannot move any faster unless the conscious self comes with it, and the conscious self cannot accelerate unless the basic self comes too. There has to be harmony between the three selves, each pulling along the self which is behind it if the train is going to move any faster. When we meditate and pray until we are old and gray, but without our basic self, we can never find the wholeness we are seeking. Spirituality cannot be separated from psychology. Unless we deal with our emotional blockages, our childhood patterns or negative and limited, limiting beliefs, our spiritual growth will always be limited. The base itself cannot grow and mature if it is left in the dark. It must be exposed to the light of awareness and love. As we learn to nurture our base itself with all its fears and doubts, its resentments and guilt, its neediness and feelings of inadequacy, we expand towards our higher self. This is one reason why having children or caring for animals 
can be such a crucial step in our growth. By becoming loving parents to another, we can learn to love and nurture ourselves. There is a true story about a very anxious young woman who had been shivering with fear for several days and was unable to rise from her bed. Her doctor was very concerned about her and woke one morning to quote unquote see a brown rabbit with a white nose hopping over his bed. When his assistant arrived, he asked her to search the neighborhood for a rabbit matching that, that description. She returned in about an hour with a rabbit. The doctor popped the rabbit into his bag and went to visit his frightened young patient. As he opened his bag, the rabbit hopped onto her bed. A look of great tenderness came over her face, and from that moment, her fear left her. Her higher self had sent her exactly what she needed, a fearful, vulnerable, basic self to care for, and this has shifted her into her higher state. The gifts of the basic self. When the basic self is loved and nurtured, it, it has wondrous gifts to offer in return. It fills us with a sense of wonder and aliveness. It gives us childlike spontaneity and playfulness. It makes us charismatic and fun to be with. It offers good health and vitality. It releases our creativity and inspiration. The basic self is also the stepping stone to our left side. Many young children will speak about past life memories. For instance, since they haven't yet learned that we are not supposed to have past lives. The basic self can often do the impossible because it is not restricted by logic and rationality. It can help us to program the future, release the past, change old habits, heal ourselves and others, develop psychic abilities, receive guidance from our higher self, and even work miracles. Our higher self is aware of every request for help, support, and guidance. But the rule is, that it only responds when the conscious and the basis self are united, so that we learn to integrate ourselves, to heal our inner child. Similarly, message from our higher self comes via the basic self. Most of our intuition flashes come not from speaking directly with our guides or higher self, but rather as bodily knowing a twinge in our gut as a thought or an idea comes to us, or a vision or images, snapshots of the future, occupied by a rush of excitement or enthusiasm. In other words, these messages come via the basic self, via the body and physical sensations. Unless we are attuned to our basic self, it is difficult to receive higher guidance. On the other hand, we need to be clear about the difference between guidance from our higher self and impulses from our subconscious mind. As an example, Linda grew up with an unhappy married couple, which was her parents, who were barely civil to each other. And her father worked in the same jury office for 40 years. As an adult, not surprisingly, Linda was afraid of commitment, seeing it as a form of imprisonment. After a year or two in any job, home, or even a relationship, she would cut out and run. She used to kid herself that she was following her heart and walking out if a situation was less than perfect or when the going got tough. She would scuttle from one experience to the next always splashing about in the shallow end of life. Others saw her as strong, independent, decisive. But the reality was that was she the reality was that she was stuck in a compulsive pattern 
running away from commitment and intimacy in response to the impulses of our fearful basic self. So how can we tell the difference? How can we know whether an impulse is from the higher guidance or it comes from our wounded inner child? The answer is that there is no universal foolproof test. This is all part of the fun and challenge of being alive. Each of us has to learn through self-awareness and personal experience. However, as a general guide, acting upon a subconscious impulse often gives an immediate sense of relief, followed by a gradual buildup of the same old uneasiness. It comes often as a hurry or compulsive quality and an inability to think clearly. It might be accompanied by anxiety, tension, sleeplessness, fatigue, or a sense of quote-unquote closing down or becoming smaller. Higher guidance tends to have more open, relaxed quality about it. It seems to expand our sense of self. It might feel a bit scary at first, but it is very exciting. Of course, even if an impulse is bubbling up from our subconscious mind, it should still be taken seriously, though not necessarily acted upon. After all, it is a gift from our base itself, revealing unmet needs or desires, suppressed emotions, fears, or emotional patterns. Each needs to be understood and healed. Everything that comes to us is our friend. The first essential, if we are to harmonize ourselves, is to befriend our base itself, our inner child. Once it feels loved and respected, the base itself is usually eager to learn and grow, but we need to speak its language, as we would that of a small child. There are seven principles to bear in mind in befriending your base itself. One, motivation. The base itself is motivated by a need, of, a need for survival and security, a desire for pleasure. Whatever you wish to create or change, think of reasons which would appeal to your basic self. If you want to sell a house, your basic self may be scared because it remembers moving house when you were small and how insecure and lonely it felt. You might need to reinsure it by being your conscious self and always be and tell your basic self that you'll always be there for it, that it, will be not, it won't be alone and that everything will work out okay. And remind it of all the reasons why moving house would be a pleasurable and very exciting adventure. Two, emotions. A telltale sign that the base itself is not in harmony is when you ask for help, guidance, healing or success or an opportunity and you don't feel anything. Without the base itself, we feel rather dead inside, just going through the motions. If we pray and use an affirmation from our conscious self alone, we're wasting our time. We might as well be reciting a shopping list. When the base itself is involved with any request, it is heartfelt. There is a feeling of love, desire, enthusiasm, excitement, and energy, and power, and we can feel it in our heart and solar plexus. When this happens, we know that our base itself is involved in our process. Three, imagery. The base itself, quote unquote, thinks mostly in images and symbols rather than words. Unlike the conscious self, it doesn't distinguish between real and imaginary. It treats whatever is experienced as real. The joy of this is that we can rehearse any situation in our minds, seeing the outcome that we desire, and our base self will believe it already happened. The more vividly we imagine it, the more strongly our basic self gets the message. 
The base itself also doesn't distinguish past, present, or future. It lives in the eternal now. The disadvantage of this is that vivid memories from the past can be still charging and causing and creating problems for you 10, 50 years later. As if it only happened yesterday. However, the advantage is that we can heal the past by just reprogramming the future, by vividly imagining different outcomes and make that impression to our basic self. And if we do that faithfully, it will accept the different alternative reality of past events. 4. Deep breathing and relaxation. Whenever we relax, we shift our awareness from the narrow focus of the conscious self and make space for the base itself and higher self to speak to us through emotions, images, sensations, intuitive flashes, words, or memories. Anything which encourages us to relax and breathe deeply, dancing, gardening, walking in nature, and our journeys, yoga, helps us to stay in touch with our basic self. Relaxation and breathing also help us to speak to our higher selves. Prayers without breath, according to a lot of traditions, would be ineffective since prayer must carry power and that power comes from our base itself. 5. Repetition the best itself is a slow learner and needs plenty of repetition. Affirmations can work miracles, but only if we use them persistently and regularly. Until our base itself finally gets the message. Since it is a creature of habit, the base itself tends to resist change at first. But once a new habit is established, it usually sticks. Your basic self, on the other hand, needs you to, you to move slowly, but surely. It absorbs what you say, and it will put it into practice. Since it is like a child, the basic self is also impressed by authority. So it can be very wise for you when you talk to your basic self that you be firm and kind when you speak to your part of yourself that you want it to do the things that you desire and to make sure you tell your basic self that it is good for it. Six, action and ritual. The basic self is much more impressed by actions than thoughts. By using our physical body, by taking action, we build a bridge between the inner and outer world and open ourselves to change. Whatever you wish to do, it is, it is crucial to take action, however small, however symbolic, to tell your base itself that you are serious about it. And for the same reason, it is important to write down or speak out loud about your inner journey, your plans, or your vision of how, where you want to go and so that your base itself knows this and take you seriously and you also connect to your higher self which brings it all about. The base itself is impressed by anything which creates a strong sensory impression light, color, music, scent, drumming, sazing, customs, dancing, movement, if you create a ceremony or a ritual with plenty of sensory input to mark a transition in your life, your basic self would know that something important is happening and would do whatever it can to help you make that shift. 7. Living with Joy When we live in harmony with our basic selves, our days will include plenty of fun. What is more, we will take every opportunity to celebrate. It's worth asking 
what is fun and celebration means to you, and whether you are living with joy. If not, you are not being a good enough parent to your basic self. You are confirming its belief that it doesn't deserve to have fun, that life is hard, that fun is an occasional treat and must be earned. You are rubbing salt into its wounds and reinforcing a pattern of growth through struggle. Living with joy is a central aspect of honoring our base itself. As we create more and more joy in our lives, our base itself begins to feel worthy and deserving. Its fears and doubts diminish. The childhood wounds begin to heal and its wondrous gifts begins to unfold. To get you started on um, working with your basic child, your basic self, shall I say, a simple exercise I'm going to share with you. At some point, get a, a notebook and a, a pencil, Sit yourself down, whether in a quiet spot in your home or in your house. Or you can do this actually, ask the question before you go to sleep. And ask your inner child, your base itself, what would make it happy? What fun things it would like to do? What it's been longing for, dreaming about? What would make it feel excited? And whatever comes to you, write it down and make a point to do those things. It may be it wants to paint pictures. Maybe it always wanted to express itself in an artistic way. Maybe it wants to play football. Maybe it wants to go on holidays. Maybe it wants to bake some yummy cupcakes. Maybe it likes swimming. Maybe it likes whatever it likes, but whatever it is, take it on board and make a point to do these things. Because if this part of you is happy, it'll be happy to agree with your conscious mind and it will be more um, inclined to be cooperative. The last thing you want is a screaming child who is not cooperative. You want a good child. You want a happy child. You want a child that trusts you. And this is also a good way to build self-trust. If you have a problem not trusting yourself and not trusting in yourself, then this is an implication that your inner child is not trusting you. In other words, You've been having a feeling about going swimming, but you, but your logic self, your conscious self is saying, no, I don't have time. I have to go to work. I have loads of things to do. And you keep putting it off. Well, just like a small child, your child, your physical child, if you keep, they keep asking you, mommy, daddy, could we go swimming? Could we go play ball? And you keep saying, yeah, 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 we'll go, we'll go. Uh, maybe next week, maybe next week. After a while, you'll find your child doesn't trust you. It will, it will not believe what you tell it. And it will become very cranky. And then you'll start having problems. But the same is true about our own inner child as well. So, just something to bear in mind. It's very important. If you want to build inner trust in yourself, you have to be good to yourself. You have to do the things that make yourself happy and feel at peace. And then your inner child would trust your conscious mind when you have a project that you want to do. It's very important not to neglect this part of yourself. So this is a simple exercise that you can do uh, to build trust and to overall make yourself happy and have a very powerful part of yourself be your very best friend. Just to uh, make a point, I would give you a personal um, example of me working with my inner child. 
Um, there was a time I wanted to go on holidays and I was consciously trying to figure out how to go on holidays because I was tired and I needed a break. And um, I didn't have the resources to go on holidays. And so I sat down, but I kept feeling in my inner belly, feeling like I should go on holidays. So I sat down, I said, right, uh, what, what can I do? So I sat down with all aspects of myself. I called upon my higher self, my inner child. And I said, right, what can we do to go on holidays? So anyway, I had this image of an came to me, well, what if a person wants to go somewhere, they feel like they stranded or they want to leave, what would they do? And then it immediately popped up, uh, they put out, they sent out an SOS, right? So uh, consciously, I said an SOS, I laughed and I thought that was very silly and a bit ridiculous, but I had a feeling of excitement about it. So I thought, you know what, I'd go with it. So I wrote a big SOS sign and I put it on my window and I, it made me laugh because I could imagine what my neighbors thought, you know, why am I putting an SOS sign on my window? And uh, it was a very silly thing to do and it made me laugh, but there was that part of me, my basic self was fully engaged in the process. And so I said, right, okay, I'm going to do this. And I said, right, I'm going to keep the sign up for about a week. And if not, I'm going to send out smoke signals out in my backyard. And um, it all became very fun. But lo and behold, within two weeks time, not only did all the money that I needed to go on holidays miraculously showed up, but I even had money coming home after my holidays as well. So this is just one of the countless examples of how powerful the inner child is and how to get your inner child engaged in something that you want to do. Sometimes it may seem silly, but that's okay. It is a child. It is the child part of ourselves. And being silly is not a problem, is wonderful. It brings the magic of life into play. And at the end of the day, yes, that part of us is magical and is powerfully magical. So let's work with it. And if something comes to you that seems silly, you think you're too old, you think you're too this, you do do that, trust yourself and just be amazed at how wonderful and magical life can be. And call on your higher self, who always loves you, protects you, and wants the best for you. This is how you learn to trust yourself and have fun. So anyway, that's my example. Right, so this is an excerpt that I read, um, the chapter Living in Harmony from the book Stepping into the Magic by Jill Edwards. I found this book to be extremely helpful and difficult times in my life. And, um, and this particular one is talking about the inner child and how important it is for us to take care of that part of ourselves, to do things that are fun, imaginative, and uh, for us to... Um, love ourselves, all of ourselves, the whole of ourselves, and that every aspect of ourselves is important. And I kind of liken it to, well, I have a vehicle and I want to go forward and I only have one tire uh, that has air in it and the other tires don't have any air in it. I'm not going to get very far. So I had to learn to nurture me, myself, and I, that's my higher self, my conscious self, and my also my inner child. And it's important to uh, make have ways in which we cater to all aspects of ourselves, not only for our happiness and well-being, but for also for us to reach our fullness of our potential. So um, I hope you enjoy this and I hope it is helpful. And I would encourage you to do things that appeal to your inner child and also to recognize the importance of the inner child because 
The basic self, subconscious mind, in a child, whatever you want to call it, is very powerful, and it actually um, it has dominion over your physical body, as well as uh, making your dreams come true. So don't overlook the, the child, because it is that part of us that is the divine child. And we want the divine child to be happy. It's a powerful child. So, um, yeah, so enjoy your life. Live in harmony. And uh, till next time, divine blessings be upon you. Thank you.